Hi and welcome to a new episode of your weekly medical show on Alkarma TV, Why Code? I always like to start by thanking our great audience for your continuous warm support and your extraordinary interaction, especially after the last episode about chronic pain injection treatment. Today we have a very, very interesting episode and we'll divide it into three parts. The first part, we'll talk about the latest technique in treating sciatica, which is spinal cord stimulator. We'll discuss everything about it and about the medical conditions can be treated using that technique. Then our second segment, which on a personal level, I'm very, very excited about it, which is modern functional medicine and how we can follow the right diet that can help and minimize the chronic pain conditions. Then the latest part will be about the most modern ketogenic diet and how it can be done right and how it can help some medical conditions like obesity and diabetes mellitus. It's my pleasure today to welcome back on White Coat, one of the outstanding physicians in University Pain Consultant Group in Southern California, Dr. Ranier Giang. And he will be with us to, today educating us about all what I have mentioned. For interaction with the program, send in all your questions and concerns to our official Facebook page, White Coat, or if you want to interact directly with our guest today, you can call the numbers that will be shown on the screen at any time during the episode. أعزائي مشاهدي قنوات الكارما في كل مكان في العالم، أعزائي مشاهدي برنامج وايت كود بالتحديد، أهلا بيكم في حلقة جديدة من برنامجكم الطبي الأسبوعي على شاشات قنوات الكارما وايت كود. الحقيقة حلقة النهاردة يعني أنا يعني إكسايتد جدا الحلقة دي لأنه إن شاء الله هتبقى حلقة مختلفة. آه مقسمينها معاكم لثلاث أجزاء بس دايما بحب أبتدي في الأول إن أنا أشكر التفاعل الرائع والسبورت بتاع حضراتكم الكبير جدا وخاصة بعد الحلقة اللي فاتت عن علاج الأمراض المزمنة بالحقن آه التفاعل بتاع حضراتكم كان رائع جدا تفاعل الجمهور كان رائع جدا حقيقة ما أحبش أسميه جمهور بحب أسمي حضراتكم شركائنا في الكارما لأنه ال الهدف بتاعنا إن إحنا نقدم لحضراتكم أفضل وأحدث الحاجات الموجودة في عالم الطب بشكل عام النهاردة زي ما أنا قلت هنقسم حلقتنا لثلاث أجزاء الجزء الأول هنتكلم عن أحدث طرق علاج عرق النساء أو السياتيكا وهي حاجة اسمها سباينال كورد ستيميليتر وعشان أقربها لحضراتكم هي شبيهة بمنظم ضربات القلب ولكن ده بينظم النبضات اللي طالعة من النخاع الشوكي اللي بتوصل الألم لكل جسمنا فدي بتنظمه بشكل كبير جدا حاجة تكنيك جديد اسمه سباينال كورد ستيميليتر هنتكلم عليه النهاردة هنتكلم على كل حاجة عنه ايه هي الحالات الطبية التانية اللي ممكن نستخدمها معاه الجزء التاني اللي انا يعني بشكل شخصي يعني مبسوط جدا ان احنا هنقدر نتكلم عليه النهاردة حاجة في العالم كله اسمها الطب البديل او الفنكشنال ماليسن بيسموه الطب الوظيفي والحقيقة الطب البديل او الطب الوظيفي بيتعامل مش بيتعامل زي الطب التقليدي اللي احنا بنتعامل بيه اللي هو فكرة ان احنا بنتعامل مع المرض وعلاجه والسيمتومز بتاعته لا ده بيتعامل مع جذور المشكلة قبل ما المرض يحصل هنتكلم كمان في النهاردة في الفنكشنال ميديسن او الطب البديل هنتكلم على الدايت بيساعد على ان احنا نقلل بقدر الامكان مشاكل الالام المزمنة اللي موجودة عندنا سواء في الرقبة او في الظهر في الرجلين كل انواع الالام المزمنه بتقل بشكل كبير جدا اذا اتبعنا الدايت ده كمان هنتكلم في اخر جزء النهارده في فقرتنا عن حاجه اسمها الكيتوجينيك دايت احدث دايت نازل في العالم كله العالم كله مقلوب وبيتكلم عنه وكنت مبسوط جدا ان احنا نلاقي واحد من المتخصصين في ده واللي بيعملوا الفانكشنال ميديسن او الطب البديل بتاع الكيتوجينيك دايت بشكل كبير جدا كتير جدا وانا بتكلم معاه واحنا بنحضر من البيشنس بتوعه يعني سمعت ارقام رهيبه ناس خسرت 50 باوندز في ثلاث شهور من غير ما تروح الجيم من غير ما تاكسرسايز ولا اي حاجه فالحقيقه انا يعني متحمس جدا جدا لحلقه النهارده و... وان شاء الله تكون حلقه حلوه جدا زي ما حضراتكم عارفين على كل الاسئله والاستفسارات بتاعت حضراتكم تقدروا تبعتوها لنا على صفحتنا الرئيسيه على الفيسبوك Uh, white coat الكارما تي في زي ما ظهر قدام حضراتكم على الشاشه uh, اذا لحضراتكم اي اسئله عن زي ما انا قلت الكيتوجينيك دايت uh, اذا بنتكلم على الدايت uh, عشان يقلل الالام المزمنه في الجسم بشكل عام 
آه اذا بنتكلم على عرق النساء ومشاكله والتكنيك الجديد اللي هنوريه لحضراتكم النهارده في طرق العلاج تقدروا تتكلموا على الرقم اللي هيظهر قدام حضراتكم على الشاشه دلوقتي في اي وقت من اوقات البرنامج آه كده تكون مقدمتنا خلصت ويلا بينا نبتدي فقرات برنامجنا النهارده من وايت كود Are you tired of being overweight? Do you suffer from diabetes? Do you suffer from hypertension? Do you suffer from obstructive sleep apnea? Do you suffer from hypercholesterolemia? Have you suffered from heart attacks in the past? Strokes in the past? Are you tired of being ostracized in public? Well, I have a solution for you. Robotic bariatric surgery. This can completely change your life. I'm Dr. Bobby Baskarow. I'm a robotic bariatric surgeon. I do robotic weight loss surgery, which can completely change your life. I offer three different types of surgeries that can completely change your life. The sleeve gastrectomy, the lap band, and the ruin wide gastric bypass. One thing that's very unique about our program is that we have a dietitian, and you will get counseled on what to eat, what not to eat, and how to optimize the utilization of your tool for good weight loss. Our God is an awesome God. He has given us so much. Family, friends, a roof over our heads, food on the table, and his greatest gift ever, his only begotten son, crucified for our salvation. Isn't it time to give back? Al Karma TV, millions for Christ. Hi, my name is Dr. Rainier Guillong. I am one of the co founders of University Pain Consultants, a multidisciplinary pain management group out of Los Angeles, California. We have multiple offices in Riverside, Temecula, Menifee, San Bernardino, and Corona. Our goal is to find ways to control chronic pain with the minimal use of opiate medications. Right now there is an opiate epidemic going on in our country. We would like to try to find a way to control each patient's individual chronic pain issue without the use of opiates. Right now in our practice we use interventional techniques such as epidural steroid injections, facet injections, radiofrequency ablation procedures, spinal cord stimulation procedures, and even Botox to control migraine headaches. We are very interested in regenerative medicine and the use of functional medicine. Chronic pain is not a disease. It is a symptom of a disease. Therefore, we need to find the underlying cause of the problem and treat that in order for us to expect to control their chronic pain. The mission at University Pain Consultants is to find alternatives to the use of chronic opiates to control chronic pain. Right now, there is an opiate epidemic going on, and we are trying to find a way to solve this problem. My vision for my patients is to minimize the use of opiates, restore health, and lead the patient to ha having a happier life. If you would like to contact us, you can find us on the web at www.unipain.com. That's spelled U-N-I-P-A-I-N.com. Outside of medicine, my hobbies include Latin dancing, target shooting, and spending time with my young children. Stay tuned for me on White Coat on All Karma TV.
اهلا بحضراتكم مره ثانيه في الجزء الرئيسي من حلقتنا النهارده في برنامج وايت كوت زي ما انا قلت لحضراتكم هنقسمها ثلاث اجزاء الجزء الاولاني هنبتدي بيه دلوقتي احدث طرق علاج عرق النساء او السياتيكا زي ما بنسميه وهنتكلم على حاجه اسمها السبينال كورد ستيميليتر تكنيك جديد وبيشرفني انه يكون معانا واحد من احسن الناس اللي بتتكلم على ده النهارده Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome back Dr. Ranier Griang and Wai Kut. Welcome back. Thank you for having me. Uh, so today we'll divide our episode to three parts. The first part we'll talk about sciatic and spinal cord stimulator, mm -hmm. right? So yes. let's start by reminding our audience what is sciatic, symptoms and signs of sciatic. Sure. Uh, we touched on this briefly last week. Uh, sciatic is basically irritation of the sciatic nerve, which gives uh, innervation and sensation to most of the low back and down the, down the legs. This nerve is often impinged upon either by a herniated disc, uh, arthritic changes in the back, or if there's instability in your spine. And these can cause severe pain which would shoot down your leg. We talked about conservative therapies such as uh, medications, physical therapy. If these things don't work, we introduce the concept of epidural steroid injections, which is an interventional procedure in order to calm the nerve down. Now, if these measures do not control the patient's pain and the, or if the medications are giving a lot of side effects, we have to make a decision now. Does the patient go off to something more invasive like a back surgery? Or if the patient does not want a back surgery, how are we going to address this? And one of the ways that we can do this is through a spinal cord stimulator. I have to make clear that a spinal cord stimulator is not a cure for sciatica. It is a way of potentially permanently blocking the signal of pain from getting from the nerve to the brain. Potential permanent blocking. Potential, yes. Okay. زي ما سألت دكتور جانج دلوقتي عن قلنا نبتدي مع حضراتكم ونذكر حضراتكم بإيه هو مرض عرق النساء أو المعروف بمرض عرق النساء أو اللي بنسميه ألمان السياتيكا. قال انه الساتيكا ده بيبقى مشكله في في النرف او في الاعصاب اللي موجوده في الجذور بتاعتها اللي بتبقى جزء منها موجود في في الاعصاب الطرفيه اللي طالعه من النخاع الشوكي وبتسبب الم شديد جدا بيوصل يعني البيشنت بيجي يشتكي يقول في حرقان رهيب جدا بحس انه في الم شديد جدا نازل على رجليا بالذات في الجزء الخلفي من الرجل او من الساق والجزء الخارجي منه الحقيقة الـ الـ الألم ده بيبقى شديد جدا زي ما قلنا بيسبب أحيانا حرقان ألم شديد أحيانا بيسبب تنميل شديد جدا في الرجل فمرض الساتيكا أو عرق النساء ده مرض منتشر بشكل كبير جدا لو شفنا الصورة في الأجزاء اللي بتتأثر من الرجل في سلايد اتنين هنلاقي الصورة بتاعته وهنلاقي إنه تقريبا الجزء ده كله من البيشنت بيبقى متأثر بشكل عام Uh, سألته عن التكنيك جديد اللي اسمه Spinal Cord Stimulator قال انه uh, احنا في الطريق ان شاء الله انه يبقى او يعني هو potential انه يبقى بيقفل uh, الـ الـ الالم اللي طالع من الاعصاب الطرفية دي اللي رايح للمخ فبيقلل او بيقفل تماما الاحساس بالالم وبالذات لمرضى uh, زي مرضى uh, عرق النساء بشكل عام So since we talked about the Spinal Cord Stimulator let's mm -hmm. start with the definition what is Spinal Cord Stimulator how it works. Sure. A spinal cord stimulator, if you look at the device itself, it is no different than a, a cardiac pacemaker. There's a battery and then there's an uh, a, a lead that goes, that is placed into the epidural space above the area where your in sciatic nerve is being impinged upon. Now the theory behind it is that these nerves are constantly sending pain signals up your spinal cord to your brain. Once that signal gets to the brain, that's where you perceive pain. If we are able to stimulate the nerve above the area where it's being irritated, we will potentially could block that signal from ever reaching the brain. So basically we're trying to override the pain signal from being transmitted to the brain. الحقيقه السؤال الثاني كان عن ايه هو السبينال كورد ستيميليتور كجهاز ازاي كمان بيشتغل على الرجل الحقيقه معنا صوره ثلاثه هو شكل الجهاز وازاي بيشتغل زي ما انا قربتها تقريبا لحضراتكم زي ما دكتور جيانج قال في الاجابه بتاعته قال انه ده جهاز زي فكره منظم ضربات القلب اللي بنحطه لمرضى القلب ده بينظم النبضات العصبيه اللي طالعه من النخاع الشوكي ومن الاعصاب الطرفيه المتصله بالنخاع الشوكي 
زي ما حضراتكم شايفين الجهاز قال ان هو بيبقى عباره عن سلك بيدخل مع النخاع الشوكي وبيبقى فيه منظم بره اللي هو الجزء الازرق يا ريت نشاور عليه ايوه هو ده المنظم اللي بره ده هو اللي بينظم السيجنالز او اشارات الالم اللي طالعه من الاعصاب الطرفيه من النخاع الشوكي للقدم واللي بتحسسنا بالالم الشديد ده وفكره الجهاز ده زي ما انا قلت هو تنظيم نبضات الالم حاليا بيستخدم مع مرضى العرق النساء او السياتيكا وكمان في بيشتغل مع مع امراض ثانيه هنتكلمها مع حضراتكم وهنوري لحضراتكم ايه هي الامراض الثانيه اللي نقدر نستخدمها معاه بشكل عام I have a question when do we go to the spinal cord stimulator as a solution uh, The typical patient that we would consider for a, a trial of a spinal cord stimulator is someone who's failed conservative therapy. That means medications, doesn't work. physical therapy, injection therapy. Typically, the patient probably already opted to try back surgery as well. And as we know that back surgery is not always successful. So most of our patients who, who we consider for spinal stimulation have already had back surgery. Okay. But there are some patients who for health reasons cannot have a big back surgery and these patients would be considered for a stimulation because it is a much less invasive procedure. So it's, it's either they failed the back surgery or they don't want to do it from the beginning. Or they have a contraindication to having or the back surgery. Or they have the contraindication. Right. The question is also Dr. Gang on the idea of the spinal cord stimulator or as we call it, the ضابط الايقاع او منظم الالام او السيجنالز الاشارات بتاع الالم اللي طالعه من الاعصاب الطرفيه الجهاز اللي احنا بنتكلم عليه النهارده سالته امتى بنلجا للجهاز ده كحل بدل الادويه بشكل عام قال لي الحقيقه احنا بنلجا للجهاز ده في حل ثلاث حالات تحديدا الحاله الاولى اللي هي مرضى عرق النساء اللي جربوا كل الادويه وجربوا الفيزيكال ثيرابي والحقيقه انه الادويه والفيزيكال ثيرابي دي ما اشتغلوش ولسه عندهم بين او الم بشكل كبير جدا في رجليهم. الحاله الثانيه انه احيانا بنجربه في بعض الام الظهر بشكل عام نتيجه الضغط على الفقرات او الكلام ده كله وان الجراحه ما نجحتش بشكل كبير لانه عارفين حضراتكم انه جراحات النوع ده من الجراحات تحديدا يعني بيبقى 50 50 ما بينجحش قوي او ما بيقللش الالم بشكل كبير فبيبقى ده بعد الجراحه. الحاجة الثالثة انه البيشنس اللي عندهم مشاكل في العمود الفقري او زي ما بنسميه الانزلاقات الغضروفية بشكل كبير جدا وعندهم مشاكل ان هم يعملوا عملية او بنسميها كونترا انديكيشن ان هم يعملوا العملية عندهم اسباب تخليهم غير قادرين على اجراء الجراحة فبنلجأ للجهاز ده لتخفيف الالم الحقيقة معنا فيديو ده جاهز معنا الفيديو Uh, معانا فيديو هنوري حضراتكم التكنيك بتاع الجهاز ده وازاي هم بيحطوه وبيستخدموه. Uh, so what other conditions besides the sciatica um, can be used for uh, a trial for spinal cord stimulation? Well, it has to be something we call a neuropathic pain syndrome, meaning that the nerves are sending these uncontrolled signals up to the brain. So there is another uh, problem that is analogous to sciatica called uh, brachial neuritis. If you have a bulging disc in your neck, you could have pain in your neck that shoots all the way down into your arms, which is analogous to sciatica, but just from a higher level in your spine. We could use it for, the, for that kind of problem as well. There are some institutions where they're using them for even cardiac pain. Even after having multiple bypass surgeries, they still have chronic angina pain. And you can use a spinal cord stimulator to block those signals also. So any kind of like back pain related to peripheral nerves problem or herniated disc or? When you talk about back pain, um, the spinal stimulator is not as effective for what we call nociceptive pain problems. Uh, it has to be a neuropathic pain problem. If you have an arthritic problem in your back, that's analogous to a, like a sprained ankle type of pain. It's not a nerve that's being impinged upon. It's not as effective for that kind of problem, but during the trial, you can find out how much uh, relief you get from it and still be considered for it. Okay. The I Dr. Giang was on what are the other conditions that we can use for the spinal cord stimulator. He 
حالات الالم بشكل عام الخاصه بالاعصاب تحديدا ولكن في المستقبل دلوقتي هو بيستخدم في السياتيكا او زي ما انا قلت لحضراتكم المرضى بتوع عرق النساء كمان بيستخدم في الناس اللي هي ما تقدرش تعمل سيرجري بشكل عام والحالات بشكل عام اللي ريليتد للالام المزمنه الخاصه بالظهر سو اتس ا بروسيجر سو هاو دو يو بريبير يور بيشنت فور ذات بروسيجر The, the beauty of the spinal cord stimulator is that how many surgeries are out there that you can actually experience the benefit of it before you actually have it done. That's why in, with a spinal stimulator first, before putting a permanent system in the patient, we do a simple trial first. We bring them to our office, we place a temporary uh, ele electrode into their back, they go home with it for about a week. During that week, it's like taking a test drive on a car. You experience how much pain relief you get. You come back to me at the end of that week, you report how much relief you got. Our cutoff is about an 80% decrease in their overall pain scores. Okay. Possibly they, they've lowered their medications as well. If they get 20, 30% pain relief, that wouldn't cut it for us and we would not consider them for a permanent implant. Okay. So they try it first, you do like a trial version for a week. Correct. Then they go home with it. Yes. If they felt 80% relief, that means they're a good candidate for the device. Correct. Okay. Like the question Dr. Giang was asking, how do you be able to prepare the patients for this procedure or for this procedure? He said that this is one of the procedures that the patient will try first before we put it in the permanent or the final. So they put the device or the wire or the السلوك دي وبيوصلوها بجهاز المنظم اوتسايد بره الجسم بشكل عام آه وبيفضلوا آه بيبعتوا البيشنت البيت لمده اسبوع وبيخلوه يجرب الجهاز ده قال انه البيشنت ده بيعتبر آه يعني بيحطوا له البيرمننت او بيحطوا له الجهاز النهائي مش التجربه للمده اسبوع دي لو الالام المزمنه عنده قلت بنسبه 80% اقل من 80% بشكل عام ما بيعتبروهوش جود كانديديت للجهاز ده وما بيحطلوهوش الجهاز ده بشكل عام لانه بي يعني بيقدروا يقولوا انه الجهاز ده مش هيقدر يناسب البيشنت ده بشكل عام فالحقيقه انه دي واحده من البروسيدجرز بشكل عام اللي البيشنت بيجرب النتائج بتاعها قبل ما يحط الجهاز النهائي او قبل ما يحط الموديل النهائي بشكل عام is there any contraindications for that procedure Just like with any other surgical procedure, if you have an uh, active infection going on, we wouldn't do the trial. If, you have, if you're on blood thinners, that's a contraindication for putting any type of needle into the epidural space. Um, or if we cannot access the actual area that we need to put the leads in. Some people okay. have back surgeries that extend all the way up their spine, and the epidural space has been obliterated, and therefore we wouldn't be able to get the leads into that epidural so space. So back surgeries, anatomical abnormalities sometimes doesn't help? Well, most of the people have back surgeries down at their lumbar spine. These leads are placed above that area in the thoracic spine. So as long as we are able to access that area, there wouldn't be a contraindication. But some people, if they have their surgeries that go all the way up into the thoracic spine, then we would not be able to place those leads. Uh, Dr. Giang, ايه هي الحاجات اللي تخلي البيشنت مش قادر انه يعمل البروسيجر دي قال لي بشكل عام لو في اي نوع من الانفكشن او العدوى في المنطقه دي ما بنستخدمش الجهاز ده الحاجه الثانيه انه البيشنتس اللي اللي عملوا باك سيرجري بشكل كبير جدا في الفقرات القطنيه بتاعتهم فبتخلي المساحه مش سامحه ان هم يدخلوا الواير ده بشكل آآ آآ عام في جسمهم وبالتالي الجهاز ده ما بيبقاش كويس للبيشنتس uh, in the case does it need follow-up? Uh, and if yes, every how long the patient needs to follow up, does the uh, device itself need some adjustment, like how it works? Sure. This, this device is, like I said, I, I use the example of a pacemaker. It is a battery. It has a finite life. And so uh, eventually the battery is going to need to be replaced. The okay. average length of a battery life for a spinal stimulator is anywhere between three to eight years, okay. depending on how much stimulation is required, how much energy is required. So it needs some adjustment after three to eight years? 
well, the battery needs to be the battery. replaced. But during that time, the patient may experience different symptoms. They may have mostly back pain, but now they're having more pain on their left. Uh, one of the representatives from the company that makes it can come in and reprogram the device to try to capture more areas. So there are 16 leads in their back, and okay. you can program these leads individually. If they come up with a new pain three or four years from now, we can try to target that by reprogramming it. Okay. I'll get back to the device, especially mm -hmm. part of it, the device itself stays outside of the body or it's all inside? It's all inside. It's all inside. We have a phone, for our first phone call for the day, Mary from Virginia. Uh, Mary, Mary? Mary? Hello? Hello? عندي ألم في ظهري من الفقرة أربعة وخمسة عاملين اختناق على المرز بتاع رجلي اليمين والشمال آه المفروض إن أنا أعمل عملية بس العملية هتكون كبيرة قوي لأن عندي أوجات في العمود الفقري والسن ما يسمحش فاستعملت جربت الحقن أول مرة جابت نتيجة تاني مرة ماري يعني معلش أنهي نوع من الحقن؟ حقن عادية ولا حقن في العمود الفقري؟ لا لا الحقن اللي هي بتتاخد في العمود الابيديور أوكي آه أوكي. تاني مرة جابت نتيجة شهر بس أوكي. وأنا دلوقتي عندي الألم جامد وبس أعمل ترامادول بس أنا بس أعمل ترامادول من عشر سنين أوكي. فقالوا لي لا يعني كده كفاية أو يعني خدي مثلا بدل ست حبايات انا باخد اثنين الصبح اثنين الظهر اثنين بالليل okay. لا خليهم مثلا اربعه بس ده مبدئيا okay. الدوز دي كبيره شويه للتشامادول آه انا فاكر حضرتك اتصلتي بينا في حلقه التشامادول آه بس انا هاخد سؤالك آه يعني اديل دكتور جانج شي هاز لمبر فور شي هاز ا بروبلم لمبر فور لمبر فايف هير نيتد ديسك شي هاز سم سكوليوسيس and some stenosis. She's 79 years old. Um, and they told her she needs to get the surgery done, but she has some contraindications for it. Uh, she did the epidural steroid injection and gave her some relief for a month. So she's asking for a recommendation. Well, it sounds like she's done most of the conservative therapy. Um, the epidural steroid injection, because it get, did give her relief, that tells us the problem is the sciatic nerve. Uh, however, she didn't get long-term relief, and you cannot repeatedly inject uh, epidural steroids uh, every month. Mm -hmm. So if her doctor says that she needs the surgery, personally, I would opt to try to go for the cure first. Okay. Now, surgery may be a cure, it may not be a cure, but you can always go back to do the spinal stimulator even after the surgery. So. That's a tough question because I don't know much else about your health, um, if you're healthy enough to have this back surgery or not. Um, if you are and you know a good surgeon, they have good outcomes, I would consider having the surgery before having the spinal stimulator. Uh, so you would prefer the surgery over the spinal cord stimulator? I, I like to go for the cure first. Okay. Because if the surgery works, there's no need for the stimulator. Uh, Mary, if you're with us, you're still on the air. What are the effects of the surgery? Or are they still on the air? Can you do the surgery? Can you do the surgery? The surgery itself? لا ما اقدرش الدكتور قال لي ما لانها 13 من 11 ل 13 ساعه okay. لان لازم يظبط العوجاج اوكي okay. uh, وبعدين يا يسلك الفقرتين يسلك النيرف منهم okay. uh, اللي هو متسبب الم في في رجليا الاثنين زي ما قال دكتور جيانج لو حضرتك مش قادره تعملي السرجري حضرتك هتبقي يعني مريضه كويسه جدا اللي احنا بنتكلم عليه النهارده اللي هو السبينال كورد ستيميليتر لو حضرتك مش قادره تعملي السيرجري فممكن حضرتك يعني تشوفي مين في فيرجينيا اللي يقدر يعمله او حتى تتواصلي معاهم لو تقدري تيجي هنا كاليفورنيا بس حضرتك هتبقي جود كانديديت للسبينال كورد ستيميليتر الجهاز اللي احنا بنتكلم عليه النهارده طالما حضرتك مش هتقدري تعملي السيرجري بشكل عام 
Uh, we have another phone call from California. Uh, Ben Terab from California. Tfadali. Hello. Tfadali. Sabah al-khir. 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 Sabah ما اعرفش ايه دي ماس اوف فات يعني ماس اوف فات اه اوكي يعني ضغط على السينيتك نيرف فعامله قلق رهيب جدا وابتديت احس ان رجليا بتوجعني okay. بالذات الصبعين الكبار بس قادره امشي بس القلم غير محتمل يعني اخدت الجابابتن ده جابابتن جابابتن قال لي لازم توصلي ل 900 يعني 900 ملي جرام في اليوم اخدت مره 300 حسيت ان انا تعبانه جدا ومش قادره يعني الالم وحش يعني النوم كمان قليل جدا لان مش بقدر انام كويس من الالم طب قالوا لحضرتك انه في اي عمليه ممكن تتعمل لده؟ هو قال النيورو سيرجن قال هي العمليه في الجزء ده خطيره لانها كلها اعصاب ومش عاده ما بتنجحش قوي أوكي. عملت فيزيكال ثيرابي ما جابتش نتيجه بس للاسف انا خايفه من الانجكشن بتاعت الابيدور اوكي خلي حضرتك معايا Um, she got an MRI done. She has a massive fat uh, pressing on her sciatic nerve, unbearable pain. She tried gabapentin, didn't work. Physical therapy didn't work. And they don't recommend the surgery. Um, so your recommendation. Well, can I ask the question, if uh, there's a massive fat uh, mass and it's impinging on the spinal cord, is the patient also overweight? Okay. Uh, Dr. Gang, Bessel Harik, Pinterrup, in California, uh, is the weight, the weight of the heart? I mean, is it? Uh, overweight. Uh, uh, cam, تقريباً, cam pound? يعني حوالي 180 pound. وطول حضرتك قد ايه؟ حوالي 4 و 5 feet كده. يعني uh, انا بالسنتيمتر من متر ونص. Okay, she's about 5 feet um, and she's 180 pounds, so she's overweight. Yes. This is something called epidural lipomatosis. Uh, it is no different than the, the fat that we gain when we, when we uh, put on weight. It's just that the fat decided to grow in the spinal. Somewhere else. You're right. right. So a conservative uh, approach to this might be what we're going to talk about later, which is a ketogenic diet to shrink all this fat down, which may decompress some of the pressure on the, on the nerves. So that might be an option, but as long as this uh, mass is not growing rapidly, then a spinal cord stimulator may be a good choice for her. And she can follow up with you. Uh, again, the phone number for a university pain consultant. It's area code 951-784-7111. بنت الرب من كاليفورنيا لو حضرتك سامعانا زي ما دكتور جيانج قال لك دي حاله طبيه معروفه عندهم هي بس زي فكره انه الدهون بتتراكم في الجسم نتيجه زياده الوزن بس في حاله حضرتك الدهون دي تراكمت في مكان مش تقليدي اللي هو النخاع الشوكي نفسه ودي بتضغط فعلا على بعض الاعصاب الطرفيه منها السياتيك نيرف وبتعمل لحضرتك كل ده زي ما دكتور جيانج رشح او يعني فضل قال انه حضرتك الاول آه لازم تتبعي نظام غذائي معين ومن ترتيب ربنا ان احنا هنتكلم على الكيتوجينيك دايت اللي هو مفيد جدا في حالات تراكم الدهون في اماكن آه يعني بره الطبيعيه في الجسم الكيتوجينيك دايت ده هيساعد حضرتك ويقلل آه نسبه الكتله من الدهون اللي موجوده وعامله ضغط على السياتيك نيرف او الاعصاب الطرفيه دي والحاله هتتحسن اوتوماتيك بفقدان الوزن ممكن حضرتك كمان بما ان انت في كاليفورنيا تتابعي معاهم رقم التليفون بتاعهم ظهر على الشاشه 9517847111 زي ما بقول لحضرتك الرقم على الشاشه تقدري تتكلمي وتتابعي مع دكتور جيانج في الاوفيس بتاعه وكمان تتابعي حلقتنا النهارده هنتكلم على الكيتوجينيك دايت عشان نقلل كميه الدهون اللي بتتراكم في اجسامنا بشكل عام. So back to the spinal cord stimulator. Let's go through the procedure and let our audience understand more about the procedure. Sure. Uh, the the video is not ready yet, so we'll use the picture for now. Okay. Um, this is a two-step process. The first thing the patient has to do is we have to evaluate the patient, make sure they are appropriate for this procedure. In the United States, 
any implantable device that you're considering putting into a patient because of the cost of it, most patients have to undergo a psychiatric evaluation right. prior. Um, most patients who have a lot of psychiatric problems may not benefit from a spinal cord stimulator because we wouldn't, wouldn't be able to accurately gauge their pain levels. Okay. Um, so after they clear that hurdle, the next step is to do the trial, which is done either in an office or a surgery center. We do it in our office. It, it takes about 25 to 30 minutes to do. It's done under local anesthetic. We bring the patient into the room. We put them on a table, which, is, uh, which has an x-ray machine over it. We clean off their back. We look at the x-ray, find the entry point. Then we just numb, numb that area up. We place a needle into the epidural space. We place the electrodes up to the level where our target is. And then once we're happy with that, we remove the needles. We leave the leads in and we tape everything down and we hook it up to an external battery. This is the trial part of it. They okay. go home with this for about five to seven days. And during that time, the representative from the company that we're using is gonna be in contact with them the entire time. Do you send them home with an external battery for Yes, trial? we do. Okay. Yes. So during that time, they are not allowed to shower. They're not allowed to? They have to sponge bathe because we cannot get the system wet. Right. Yes. Then after a week? Then after a week, they return to our clinic. We actually remove the trial leads, and then we ask them what the outcome was. What was their pain reduction? Were they able to do more things? Did they, were they able to reduce how much medication they were taking? How's their life quality in general? Correct. Mm -hmm. it, it goes e two ways. Either the patient loves it, or they didn't feel like it did much. So most of the time when the patient comes in, they, I'd walk in the room, they'd ask me, when are we putting this permanent one in? You know, that tells me they're very happy with Yeah, the they're outcome. satisfied. When they say, well, it helped a little bit, to me that's, that's not worth going through the next step of an actual surgery to put this in. طب زي ما قال دكتور جانج زي كل المشاهدين وبالذات الاتصالات اللي جات لنا النهارده ومنهم حد مدام ماري من فيرجينيا تعتبر يعني بيشنت كويس قوي للعمليه دي انا سالته ايه هي الخطوات اللي بتتم بيها العمليه دي لو رجعنا لسلايد ثلاثه زي ما حضراتكم زي ما شفناها قبل كده بيزكلي هم بيحطوا واير زي سلك بجانب النخاع الشوكي دي حاجه Uh, وبيحطوه لمدة أسبوع لو نقدر نجيب سلايد ثلاثة تاني معنا عشان أقدر أوري لحضراتكم uh, هما بيحطوها فين بالظبط uh, سلايد ثلاثة معنا جاهزة سلايد ثلاثة معنا جاهزة uh, هوري لحضراتكم دلوقتي بالظبط هي دي uh, بيدخلوا الواير ده جنب النخاع الشوكي الواير اللي هو الجزء الأسود اللي موجود جنب النخاع الشوكي يا ريت نشاور عليه عشان الساده المشاهدين بتوعنا يقدروا يشوفوا الواير ده بيبقى موجود فين بالظبط وبيحطوا بعد كده بره اكسترنال باتري اللي هو الجزء الازرق ده وده بيجربوه لمده اسبوع والبطاريه دي بتفضل بره زي ما قال دكتور جيانج انه البيشنت ما بيقدروش ياخدوا شاور لمده اسبوع بس يقدروا يعني يعني ينظفوا جسمهم بعيد عن فكره الشاور خالص لانه الباتري دي بتبقى يعني ما نقدرش نعرضها للميه بعد اسبوع بيرجع البيشنت للاوفيس وبيسالوه نسبه البين الكواليتي بتاع الحياه بتاعه عامله ازاي لو البين قل بنسبه 80% في فيما فوق بيبتدوا يحطوا له البيرمننت ويدخلوا البطاريه دي الصغيره جوه جسمه وتبتدي تتقفل بحيث انه ده هيبقى البيرمننت زي ما دكتور جيانج قال انه تقريبا بتحتاج ادجستمنت كل من 3 ل 8 سنين لانه البطاريه زي اي بطاريه في الدنيا بتفضى بتحتاج تتشحن قال كمان ان هم الميزه ان هم بيقدروا يعملوا بروجرامنج للجهاز ده انه ياخد مساحات اوسع من الجسم او يغطي كميات اكبر من النخاع الشوكي والاعصاب الطرفيه وبالتالي تريح فكره الالام المزمنه بشكل عام. Uh, we have another phone call from mm. California. Uh, مدام ساميه حضرتك على الهواء اتفضلي. مدام ساميه اتفضلي. لو اه مدام ساميه حضرتك على الهواء اتفضلي لو الو اتفضلي يا فندم حضرتك على الهواء سؤال حضرتك ايوه صباح الخير صباح النور يا فندم اتفضلي 
وربنا يبارككم بجد على البرنامج الجميل ده. تعيش يا فندم. انا كنت دخلت قبل كده وعلى موضوع القلم اللي انا ما كنتش قادره احط رجلي لحد دلوقتي بسيط قوي وعملت عملت التراساون مرتين ومن يومين تعبت جامد ورحت الامرجنسي عشان اخد مسكن. ف رحت المتخصص ركبه اعطتني ابره كورتيزون وقالت لي ما فيش اي حاجه خالص في الرجل هو ممكن يكون التهاب في الظهر وانا ظهري حتى ما بيوجعنيش قالت لي لا مش شرط يوجعك او كده التهاب في الظهر هو اللي عامل على رجلك كده حضرتك عملتي ام ار اي قبل كده؟ لسه امبارح بس عاملاها والسي دي معايا وهروح للدكتور انا ما عرفتش طبعا في ايه طيب انا بعد اذن حضرتك تقدري تبعت لنا نتيجه الام ار اي يا اما على الصفحه بتاع البرنامج تقدري تو ان بوكس الصفحه بتاع البرنامج وتبعت لنا النتيجه وانا هتواصل مع دكتور بيانج واخليه يتواصل مع حضرتك شكرا يا فندم. She didn't get the MRI yet. She has a problem with her knee, but she did. She just got the MRI done yesterday. Um, so you would rather see the MRI first, right? It's necessary to see the MRI first. You need to know what the pathology is before considering any type of intervention. Madam Sami, if you're listening to us, as Dr. Gang said, we need to see the MRI first. If you're listening to us, send us the results at any time on the page of the program. موجودة على الفيسبوك وايت كود الكارما تي في دايما بنحطها في اول برنامج ولو الشباب في الاعداد يقدروا يطلعوها لحضرتك دلوقتي uh, الصفحه اسمها بالظبط كده وايت كود الكارما تي في تقدري تبعت لنا نتيجه الام ار اي وهبعتها لدكتور جيانج as soon as she gets the MRI results um, I'll send it to you thank you uh, okay back to the spinal cord stimulator what's the complication for such a procedure the nice thing about the spinal stimulator is that you're doing a trial first, so you're going to get a good idea of whether or not the patient's going to get good relief with it. But as far as complications, it's the same as any type of surgical procedure. There's a chance that in the post-operative period you could get an infection, so you have to keep all your incisions clean. Um, during the healing process, which is the first four to six weeks after the permanent implant is done, we usually let the patient wear a back brace. And it's not because they need a back brace, it's just to remind them not to do too much moving, twisting, and bending because those leads are in her back and we want them to stay exactly where, where we put are. them. Mm -hmm. If they start doing a lot of things too quickly, those leads could slide up and down into that epidural space and then we might lose capture of where we're trying to stimulate. Okay. Can they still take medication like gabapentin or any kind of medication on this procedure? Well, the spinal stimulator may take away, let's say, 80% of your pain. That means there's still 20% of pain there. So we still treat it in the usual fashion. They may need medication, they may need physical therapy, or even sometimes they still need some sort of injection therapy. Okay, can they do physical therapy with the child version or after the permanent? Oh, after the permanent, okay. far after the permanent has been healed. Okay, yes. my last question, mm -hmm. coverage. Is it covered by insurance and the roughly cost for cash patients? Okay. Is it covered by insurance? Yes, it is. But there are strict guidelines of who qualifies for it. So as long as they meet those guidelines, uh, it should be covered under their insurance. Okay. Now, what are the guidelines? Well, they have to have failed conservative therapy. They have to have the appropriate pathology. They have had to try multiple interventional things first. We don't jump to an implantable device. That's something at the end of the spectrum, not the at road. the beginning. Yeah. Um, and they have to show that they've had their psychological clearance and that the trial itself gave them the appropriate amount of relief. And that all has to be documented, submitted, and then approved. You get approval. Yes. The roughly cost for cash patients? For a cash patient, this is it's quite cost prohibitive because the device itself is probably going to cost somewhere in the twenty-five to $30,000 just for the device. And okay. now we have to take in the cost of bringing them to the hospital or the surgery center to have it done. And there are costs to that as well. Okay. 
طب الحقيقه الاسئله اللي عن الجهاز ده الحقيقة ورا بعض عشان جاني اسئله كتير عليه رقم واحد او هي الكومبليكيشنز او مضاعفات البروسيجر دي بشكل عام قال لي زي اي مضاعفات بروسيجر انه ممكن يحصل انفكشن او عدوى في مكان الجهاز او الوايرز نفسها ودي بتحصل مع اي نوع من العمليات عشان كده لازم نخلي الانسجن او الجرح اللي مكان العمليه يبقى نضيف معظم الوقت السؤال اللي جاني برضو على العملية على العملية دي أو البروسيجر دي بشكل عام الناس تقدر تفضل تاخد الجابا بنتن أو الأدوية اللي هي بتاخدها قال لي أيوة الناس تقدر تاخد الأدوية دي ولكن هتقل بشكل كبير لأنه من المتوقع أنه الألام المزمنة نتيجة السياتيكا بعد العملية دي تقل تقريبا بنسبة 80% سألته كمان على الفيزيكال ثيرابي قال لي الفيزيكال ثيرابي ما بنحبش نعمله وقف الاسبوع الاولاني اللي هو وقت الترايل قبل ما نحط البرمننت ولا بعد البرمننت بشويه ممكن تعمل فيزيكال ثيرابي بعد البرمننت بحبه كتير يعني. آه سالته كمان اذا هي العمليه دي بتتغطى بالانشورنس قال لي ايوه لو البيشنت الادويه ما جابتش معاه نتيجه الفيزيكال ثيرابي ما جابش معاه نتيجه عمل باك سيرجري وما جابتش معاه نتيجه آه فكل ده طبعا لازم يحصل له دوكيومنتيشن بيتبعت والانشورنس بيغطي العملية دي بتمنى ان احنا السبينال كورد ستيميليتر في الجزء الاولاني من برنامجنا نكون غطيناه مع حضراتكم لو زي ما قلت حضراتكم احنا لسه بناخد اسئلة كتير دلوقتي تقدروا يا اما تبعتوا لنا على صفحتنا على الفيسبوك وايت كود الكارما تي في او تقدروا حضراتكم تتكلموا على الارقام الموجودة على الشاشة من اي حتة في العالم هناخد فاصل نرجع مع حضراتكم على الجزء الثاني اللي انا متحمس جدا عليه والعالم كله بيتكلم عليه دلوقتي اللي هو الطب البديل والكيتوجينيك دايت آه هناخد فاصل ونرجع مع حضرتك Are you tired of being overweight? Do you suffer from diabetes? Do you suffer from hypertension? Do you suffer from obstructive sleep apnea? Do you suffer from hypercholesterolemia? Have you suffered from heart attacks in the past? Strokes in the past? Are you tired of being ostracized in public? Well, I have a solution for you. Robotic bariatric surgery. This can completely change your life. I'm Dr. Bobby Baskerow. I'm a robotic bariatric surgeon. I do robotic weight loss surgery, which can completely change your life. I offer three different types of surgeries that can completely change your life. The sleeve gastrectomy, the lap band, and the Roux-en-Wide gastric bypass. One thing that's very unique about our program is that we have a dietitian, and you will get counseled on what to eat, what not to eat, and how to optimize the utilization of your tool for good weight loss. say to you, whoever believes has eternal life, I am the bread of life. They don't need to go away, you give them something to eat. اهلا بحضراتكم مره ثانيه في وايت كوت حلقتنا النهارده الجزء اللي انا متحمس له جدا جدا اللي هو فكره الطب البديل وازاي نقدر نبقى دايما على دايت بيناسب الميديكال كونديشنز بتاعتنا او حالاتنا الطبيه هنتكلم على نوعين من الدايت الدايت الاولاني آه ازاي ايه هي الاكلات اللي بتقلل 
الالام المزمنه بشكل عام وايه هي الاكلات اللي لازم نبتعد عنها لانها بتزود الالام في حالات الالام المزمنه في بيشنس كتير الجزء الاخير اللي انا متحمس عنه بشكل كبير جدا اللي العالم كله مقلوب وبيتكلم عليه دلوقتي اللي هو الكيتوجينيك دايت هنوري حضراتكم ازاي الكيتوجينيك دايت بيحصل وزي ما انا قلت لحضراتكم سمعت ارقام رهيبه جدا الناس يعني سمعت ما بين 50 باوند ل 180 باوند لص خساره في ظرف من ثلاث لخمس شهور فانا متحمس جدا للفقره دي الحقيقه وان شاء الله تكون فقره كويسه بفكر حضراتكم تاني اسئلتكم صفحتنا الرئيسيه على الفيسبوك او الارقام اللي هتظهر قدام حضراتكم على الشاشه. So my favorite segment we'll talk about the functional medicine right but let's start off first what's the conventional western medicine and what's the functional medicine and the difference between both of them. Sure. I'm a conventionally trained allopathic physician. That means that you do your four years of medical school, your years of residency, and you're taught to communicate with patients, do a physical exam, order appropriate tests, and then we make a diagnosis, and then we prescribe Treat. treatment. Now, most of the diseases that we treat, you tell me you're ill, I give you a pill. Right. as if pills are going to be the answer to every problem. The problem is that these pills very rarely ever cure any disease. It treats the symptoms, but the underlying course of the disease still progresses. Right. And it's frustrating because you don't see people actually getting better. You have diabetes and you treat the diabetes on a chronic basis. But what, why can't we cure it? Yeah. But you're still diabetic with treatment. So why can't we cure it? That's the question. The problem is that all the treatments that we have are, we're treating the lab tests. You get it, let's say you're diabetic, you get a hemoglobin A1C, it's, it's high. So your doctor prescribes medications. These medications, all they do is treat the lab tests. It just moves the sugar from the blood where we measure it into our fat cells. So we're just tucking it away somewhere and then when we check the lab, we pat ourselves on the back and say, wow, look at your blood sugar is so much better. You're still diabetic, You're still diabetic. <laughs> but your blood sugar is better. And that's frustrating because the patient is not getting better. Right. So and instead of making them going to insulin, which I know you hate, so we'll deal with the roots of the problem. Correct. Functional medicine uh, is a relatively new specialty in medicine. It looks at the patient as a whole. We look at what is the underlying process that caused this disease, and let's try to reverse those things either through nutrition, behavioral changes, uh, lifestyle changes, and we were looking to actually looking for a cure, not just to treat the symptoms. Okay. Uh, the question is, Dr. Yang, is the difference between the medical treatment that the world is all about and the medical treatment or what we call the medical treatment? قال لي الحقيقه انه الطب التقليدي المتبع في العالم كله حضرتك بتشتكي او حضرتك بتشتكي من حاجه معينه بتروح للدكتور بيعمل لك شويه تحاليل واشعات بيشخص المرض وبنديله علاج انما ما بنتعاملش بشكل قوي قوي مع اسباب المرض او ايه البارم لاين او الـ 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 اللي ورا المرض ده بشكل عام الطب البديل او الطب الوظيفي اللي بنسميه الفانكشنال ميديسن اللي هو برضو ظاهر جديد في العالم ناس كتير قوي ابتدت تتجه للنوع ده اللي هو فكرة خلونا نعالج أسباب المرض أو نقدر نمنعه اللي هو فكرة الوقاية خير من العلاج بشكل عام طيب الطب البديل ده دايما له يعني tools أو أدوات زي ما بنسميه فعايزين نسأل دكتور جانج إيه هي الأدوات دي What are the tools for the functional medicine that we can use? The tools for functional medicine are not very different than what we use in conventional medicine. We still communicate with the patient, take a history, a physical, we order lab tests, x-rays, MRIs, things that are but typical. But we deal with the underlying cause. That's Correct. Okay. And once we make the diagnosis though, instead of prescribing medication to treat the symptom, so take for example diabetes, we would prescribe treatment that would actually reverse the diabetes instead. Right. So we know that diabetes is with diabetes type 2 is a problem of insulin resistance. That means we're through our entire lives we're spewing out too much insulin because we're eating too much carbohydrates. Right. So why can't we make ourselves insulin sensitive again? The way to do that is to teach your body not to spew out so much insulin. Right. 
Well, let's put them on a diet that is very low carbohydrate. The carbohydrate will not cause, I mean, the, the lack of carbohydrate will cause the insulin secretion to go down. And over time, your body will become sensitive again to it. Okay. Therefore, is a potential cure. Okay. So how we apply this function in medicine and two of our cases today, the first one, the chronic pain. The second one is ketogenic diet. So let's start with the chronic pain. And let's start with the inflammatory food list that we should avoid. And then we'll talk about the anti-inflammatory food that we can eat. Okay. Let's well, start with the inflammatory food list. Right. In most pain conditions, patients have, I mean, let's say, pain in multiple joints, polyarthritis. And the definition of arthritis is a joint, uh, arth means joint, itis means inflammation. So the un underlying problem is inflammation. And then if we look in our body, where does inflammation come from? And it, it comes from the immune system. Right. And if we look at, okay, where's the immune system in the human body? 60 to 70% of the, of the immune system is located in the gastrointestinal tract. So if there's a place that... If we could control that, that, would have better results. Right. If there's a place that, it's being, that your immune system is being exposed to some kind of, uh, whether it's an allergen or something that, that is causing this inflammatory response, if 70% of your immune system is in your gut, that's, there's a pretty good chance that it could be coming from there. So we start looking at what are the foods that we believe are the ones that are causing the most uh, inflammation. Number one for our practice, we, we find gluten to be a problem. Okay, I'll, I'll just explain mm -hmm. the concept, then we'll go through the inflammatory right. food list. زي ما سأل دكتور جانج، أوكي، إحنا دلوقتي الطب البديل وبنقول إزاي نتعامل مع مسببات المرض، إزاي هنطبق ده في الحالتين الأساسيين بتوعنا النهاردة، المرضى رقم واحد المرضى اللي بيعانوا من آلام مزمنة نتيجة أي سبب بقى، نتيجة مشاكل في المفاصل أو الأرثرايتس زي ما بنسميه، نتيجة مشاكل في العمود الفقري، مشاكل في الأعصاب الطرفية، السياتيكا أو العرق النساء، أي آلام مزمنة نتيجة أي سبب في الجسم، قال لي الحقيقة إنه الطب البديل بيتعامل مع فكرة إنه رقم واحد إنه الآلام دي بتيجي نتيجة التهابات معينة في الجسم، طيب اللي بيسبب الالتهابات دي إيه هو اللي بيسبب الالتهابات دي؟ قال إنه عدم قدرة الإميون سيستم أو جهاز المناعة بتاع الجسم في التعامل مع مسببات الالتهابات دي. لما جم يبصوا لإنه لقوا إنه 60 ل 70% من جهاز المناعة موجود في الجهاز الهضمي. قالوا طيب بما انه من 60 ل 70% من جهاز المناعه موجود في الجهاز الهضمي لو احنا قدرنا نتعامل مع الاكل اللي بناكله وقللنا الاكل اللي بيسبب الالتهابات او وبالتالي بيحفز الالام المزمنه بشكل عام هنقدر نتعامل مع الالام المزمنه دي في الجسم فالحقيقه عملوا لستتين كبار جدا ومشهورين جدا دلوقتي في العالم الليسته الاولى اللي بيسموها الانفلاماتوري فود ليست او الاكلات المحفزه او المحرضه على الالتهاب وبالتالي بتسبب كتير من الالام المزمنه والنوع تاني الليسته الثانيه سموها الانتي انفلاماتوري فود او الاكلات اللي بتهدي الالتهابات شويه في جسمنا وبالتالي بتؤدي لتقليل كميه الالام المزمنه في الجسم نتيجه تاني انه جهاز المناعة 70% موجود منه في الجهاز الهضمي فلو تعملنا بشكل كويس مع الأكلات اللي بناكلها بشكل عام هنقدر نتعامل مع الألام المزمنة اللي موجودة في جسمنا So let's start with the inflammatory food list and how uh, to avoid them okay. The first thing I, I tell my patients if they are interested in trying this alternative approach to treating their pain the first thing I would tell them to get off is gluten now, gluten is a protein that's found in wheat, barley, rye, and oats. So it's in everything. In everything. We're almost. talking bread, pasta, cereal, cookies, crackers, anything that has flour in it will have gluten in it. Okay. And we believe that gluten, um, first of all, there is a, there's a disease called celiac disease. Right. That's where you're actually allergic to gluten. To gluten. And that's easily diagnosed. I mean, you get all the same symptoms of any other allergy. But... There's something that we believe that's called gluten sensitivity. There are over a thousand different versions of gluten, but the test we have for celiac disease only tests for one kind of it. So the other 999 types of gluten we're not even testing for. So there is no good test for gluten sensitivity except to get off of it. 
and see if you improve. Okay. So number one is gluten, to stay away from gluten. Yes. Okay. الحقيقة هنبتدي باللستة اللي معانا النهاردة واللي هي بتسبب كتير من الالتهابات واللي بتسبب كتير من الألام المزمنة اللي بيسموها بالعربي الأكلات التحريضية على الألام المزمنة اسم يعني صعب جدا رقم واحد في الحاجات دي اللي لازم نتجنبها هي الجلوتين لما نخلص اللستة دي حضراتكم في الآخر أنا عارف هتقولوا طب هناكل إيه هنقول لحضراتكم ممكن تاكلوا إيه رقم واحد الجلوتين زي ما انا قلت الجلوتين ده بروتين موجود في كل منتجات القمح او دقيق القمح بشكل عام فبالتالي هتلاقوه في العيش في المكرونات في الكراكرز اللي بناكلها في السناكس في الحاجات دي ولكن اذا تجنبنا الجلوتين بشكل عام كبروتين هيخلي فكره الالام المزمنه في جسمنا موجوده بشكل افضل كتير. اوكي نمبر 2 اور فود ليست ذا انفلاماتوري فود ليست The second thing I tell people to avoid is conventional dairy products. Okay. Conventional dairy products are very inflammatory because of the way that we produce milk in this modern age. Okay. We have these massive super farms where we have thousands of dairy cows all in a very small enclosed space. To keep them healthy and producing milk, we pump them full of hormones and antibiotics and we, we're feeding them, we feed them grain. Right. Cows aren't, aren't made to eat grain. They're, they're supposed to be eating grass. So we're, we're, eating, we're, we're giving them a very pro-inflammatory food, and we're pumping them full of all these other chemicals that are going to be passed on into the milk. Yeah. And when you, get, you eat a milk product, you're going to get everything that was pumped into that, into that dairy cow. Okay. And the fact is that the two of us have in the list are the natural products. The natural products are the natural products. The natural products are the natural products. بالاسف انها بتحفز بعض الالتهابات او في مناطق معينه في جسمنا وبتزود الالام المزمنه بشكل عام يبقى رقم واحد بروتين الجلوتين رقم اثنين منتجات الالبان وهنقول لحضراتكم من وجهه نظر الطب البديل نقدر نعوضها بايه نمبر 3 اور لاست توداي نمبر 3 ذات ذس از ا جيفن بروسيسد فودز اند بروسيسد شوجرز For, the, for thousands of years, we've been eating real food. I mean, when you, ate, when you went to a butcher, you got a real piece of meat that was just recently slaughtered, that was raised on a farm somewhere. Uh, we didn't buy foods that were in boxes and cans. We went to a market and we actually got real vegetables. Now we're getting canned vegetables or frozen vegetables and things like that. These are all processed foods that have lost most of their nutrient value in them. And in order to keep them palatable, we stuff them full of sugar. And so the problems with processed sugar are apparent, are diabetes, the obesity, metabolic syndrome. The number three and four in the food that we call the disease on the disease or the disease أو بتساعد في زيادة الألام المزمنة في الجسم البروسيس ميت كل أنواع اللحوم المصنعة طبعا زي ما حضراتكم عارفين ما بنقصدش اللحوم اللي هي يعني الحيوانات اللي بتبقى مدبوحة وطالعة طازة ولكن اللحوم المصنعة اللي هي فكرة اللانشون البسترما كل الأنواع دي من اللحوم اللي بيضاف عليها بريزرفاتيفز أو مواد حافظة دي بنسميها فكرة اللحوم المصنعة الحاجة الرابعة السكر المكرر السكر المكرر بكل مشتقاته و... ودايما بيقولوا في فكرة الطب البديل ان السكر المكرر او السكريات بشكل عام لقوها بتقلل قدرة كرات الدم البيضاء على القيام بوظائفها وبالتالي بتقلل فكرة المناعة بشكل كبير جدا فالسكر المكرر بمشتقاته اللحوم المصنعة بمشتقاتها What else in our inflammatory food list? Well I also tell people to, if they can, to stay away from genetically modified foods or genetically modified organisms. The problem with all these things, whether it's processed food, GMOs, genetically modified organisms, gluten, is that for thousands of years, we, when we were eating real food, our bodies knew what these things were. But now that we're processing them and making them into what we call Franken foods, When we eat these foods, your body is looking at it and, and saying, well, what is this thing? I don't recognize it. So what does it do? It makes an inflammatory response against it. Okay. And that increases inflammation. And 
And the second thing that happens is it causes damage in our gut so that these unprocessed, uh, uh, undigested proteins get into our system and our bodies recognize them as, as aliens and we start causing inflammation throughout our body and that's why we have pains everywhere in our body. Basically, how can I deal with this? That's the question our body is asking. Correct. Right? So can you give us some examples for the GMO food? Sure. GMO foods, the number one is, is corn. And corn, I, I believe 80-something 80, 80 percent of all corn in the United States is genetically modified. When I talk about GMOs, the danger of GMOs is that these are foods that we have every day on our plates, and they're mass-produced. But in order to increase the yield, scientists have found a way that they could insert a gene into these foods, and that gene protects that, let's say, that plant, that corn plant, from pesticides. So basically, it's protecting the plant from being eaten by a pest, because now you can grow these crops in a bath of pesticide like Roundup or, or glyphosate. Mm. And when you, get, when you eat that food, you're going to be eating the residue of that pesticide. Uh, what else other than the um, corn and the GMO list? Sure. Uh, corn, soybeans, canola, sugar beets, papaya, squash, and most recently apples and potatoes. Apples and potatoes too is part of the GMO list? Correct. Okay. That made me sad, by the way, but... Al-Hayya, <laughs> 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 احنا لسه مستمرين في فكرة الليستة بتاع الأكلات اللي بتزود الألام المزمنة في الجسم بشكل عام أو اللي بت بتحفز على مزيد من الالتهابات في أجزاء معينة في جسمنا وبالتالي بتزود الألام المزمنة هلخصهم كلهم لحضراتكم بشكل عام رقم واحد اتكلمنا على الجلوتين قلنا نبعد عنه رقم اتنين منتجات الألبان بشكل أكتر من اللزوم رقم تلاتة السكر المكرر بمشتقاته اللحوم المصنعة بمشتقاتها رقم خمسة الحاجات المعدلة جينيا وزي ما دكتور جيانج قال كتير منهم موجودين زي فول الصويا زي زيت الدرة أو الدرة بشكل عام زي كمان البابايا قال كمان الكوسة والزوكيني والسكواش بشكل كبير جدا بيبقوا معدلين جينيا وبالتالي لو يفضل ان احنا أو مرضى الألام المزمنة تبعد على النوع ده من الأكلات آه كمان الكحوليات واللحوم الحمراء نحاول نبعد عنهم تماما. So that's our inflammatory food list that we should avoid. Sure. Right? Yes. There is a, an important question after all what you mentioned. What the heck we're going to eat? Right? Yeah, we can easily make a list of all the things that you should avoid. And then you, the joke is if you have an organic, GMO free, anti inflammatory diet, you basically have a plate of ice. Okay. Right. That, it's not true, though, because actually most of the foods that are out there, you can find a healthy version of it. Okay. For instance, if you, we talk about, um, talk, d depending on what your goal is, there are gluten-free breads and pastas and things. These are good to avoid gluten, but they still have a lot of sugar in them. So if you're diabetic, that's maybe not what you want to go, that's not what you want to get. Okay. Um, there are if you want to eat meats and fish, as long as they're organically raised, I have no problem with red meat as long as it's grass-fed or pasture-raised pasture, pasture raised meats. Okay. I have a question on Facebook. Mm -hmm. How is the uh, sugar substitutes? It depends on what your goal is. Now, sugar substitutes, if you're trying to lose weight, you will not lose weight using a sugar, a sugar substitute, even though it has no calories. It has nothing to do, do with calories. If you're trying to lose weight, you're trying to decrease the insulin response to your food. So if you have a artificial sweetener, your body's gonna still think it's sugar. Okay. So you're gonna get the insulin response and you're gonna gain weight. So even sugar substitutes uh, will hurt the response to our insulin? In yes. Our okay. That's why you see most people drinking diet sodas. Now, they don't lose weight. And they do not lose weight. Uh, زي ما دكتور جيانج قال كمان الرقم واحد يعني من الحاجات المهمة جدا اللي لازم نعملها ان احنا نبعد عن السكر او السكريات بشكل عام او السكر المكرر الابيض وقدر الامكان نبتعد كمان عن بدايل السكر لانه ما بتخليناش نفقد الوزن زي ما ناس كتير آه متخيلة يبقى اذا احنا عندنا قايمة من الاكلات المفروض نتجنبها تماما 
عشان الاكلات دي بتحفز التهابات في مناطق مختلفه من جسمنا وبتحفز الالام المزمنه آه بشكل كبير جدا زي ما احنا قلنا السكر المكرر آه اللحوم المصنعه الجلوتين آه منتجات الالبان اللحوم الحمراء كل ده نحاول ناكله باعتدال واذا كلنا ناكل الحاجات قدر الامكان انا عارف انه ده طبعا آه بيبقى مكلف جدا ولكن الحاجات الاورجانيك بتبقى آه افضل بكتير So that's our inflammatory food list. What's the anti-inflammatory food list that can help the chronic pain? Well, that's a little bit of a harder question, and I get this all the time. But there's a really, really good resource for this. And I'm, is it okay if I show it? Yeah, sure, of course. This is a book by Dr. Mark Hyman. He's the head of uh, functional medicine at the Cleveland Clinic. It answers that exact question, food, what the heck should so, I eat? Right. And it goes through every food group and gives you the pros and cons of each one and explains the science behind why they are inflammatory or not. Okay. The question that we ask all of you after we said that all of you, all of the four or five things that we said that this is going to help the disease in a very large way. Okay, what do we eat now? That means that you have given us the products of the Alban, the red and the red and the red and the red and all of these things. What do we eat? There is a great book on how to eat the food in a very good way and to reduce the amount of the disease that is available in your body and your ability to the disease, as you can see. The book is called Dr. Mark Hyman. It's called What the heck should we eat? The book is available. Can we buy it on Amazon? Yes, you can. تقدروا حضراتكم تشتروا الكتاب ده من امازون تاني اسمه What the heck should we eat uh, لدكتور مارك هايمل الحقيقه كتاب رائع جدا 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 uh, وهيجاوب على كل الاسئله بتاع uh, بدائل الطعام اللي نقدر ناكلها طالما كل الاكلات اللي احنا قلناها دي بتزود الالام المزمنه. But still can we give some examples for the anti-inflammatory food? Sure. Let's start with things that some people think are unhealthy. Eggs. For instance, organic eggs, very anti-inflammatory, full of really good, healthy fats. Uh, when you cook, you want if you cook with oil, you have to look at what oil are you using. Most people use vegetable oil or canola oil, which are very inflammatory. Uh, so, vegetable oil and canola oil and are in, are inflammatory. They food. are inflammatory. Okay. I would stay away from them. I would throw them away. Throw them away. Throw them away. Okay. Yeah. What is canola oil? Do you know what it means? Canola oil, there's no such thing as a canola plant. Canola means Canadian oil. It comes from rapeseed. It's a flower. It was never meant to be a food. But it's so abundant, they needed to find our use for it, so that we started using it for food. The book is on this. Yes. OK. Um, I would use, number one, coconut oil okay. for everything. Coconut oil? Because okay. it's full of the omega-3 fats, which are the anti-inflammatory fats. It repairs your nerves. It, it's used as a source of energy. Uh, the second one I would use is olive oil. But if you use olive oil, make sure you do not cook the olive oil. Do not heat it. Put it on your food. But if you heat the olive oil, you'll create free radicals, which are potentially damaging to your tissues. Okay. I would eat real grass-fed butter. Butter is great for you, full of omega-3 fats. Makes you lose weight. Great energy source. Makes you lose weight. That's yes. what we're going to talk about mm -hmm. in ketogenic diet. Right. The uh, thing is, as Dr. Giang said, that the two types of oil are not recommended to be used at all. The doctor said that I can remove them. The oil of the oil, the oil of the oil, which is a special oil, is oil of the oil. We don't use it at all because it is going to reduce the pain in our bodies. And he said that we should use two types of oil. The first one is oil of the oil of the hand in the kitchen. ما تستغربوش زيت جزء الكوكونات اويل آه قال انه اولا بيدي طاقه كبيره جدا آه بيقلل الالتهابات والالام المزمنه في الجسم فده نقدر نستخدمه في الاكل لانه بيبقى افضل كتير النوع الثاني من الزيوت المفضل في الاكل ولكن ما نسخنوش نستخدمه زي ما هو كده آه زيت الزيتون الحاجات دي آه مع الاكلات بتقلل فكره الالام المزمنه في الجسم بشكل عام what else is anti-inflammatory food that we can use on a daily basis? Sure. Meats and fish are very healthy for you. But the organic type. Right. But the old adage, you are what you eat. So you have to look at how 
that animal was raised. If you're eating farm-raised meats or fish, these are animals that are raised in these humongous super farms, and they're, they try to feed them the least costly kind of food. Whereas there are many health benefits to eating grass-fed meats, organically raised chickens, or pasture-fed chickens, uh, uh, vegetables, any type of vegetable is, is good for you, except if you may have an allergy or a sensitivity to nightshades. Okay. How's uh, turmeric? Turmeric is, is wonderful. We should all be eating turmeric. As you know, turmeric is a, is a spice that is used in curries, but it's also very anti-inflammatory. It helps you lose weight. It, uh, when I say anti-inflammatory, it has the advantage that it's not toxic to the kidneys or the gut like NSAIDs are. So we can use that for people who have stomach issues or kidney issues without problems. زي ما دكتور جان كمان سالته على فكره طب ايه هي بقى الاكلات اللي هتبقى مضاده للتهابات زي ما انا قلت ما نستخدمش زيت الذره ما نستخدمش زيت الخضار المهدرج ونستخدم زيت الكوكونات او جوز الهند او زيت الزيتون قال كمان من احسن الحاجات اللي ضد الالتهابات في جسمنا وبتساعد جدا فكره الالام المزمنه اضافه الكركم او التمرك للطبيخ بكل مشتقاته بتساعد جدا على تقليل التهابات والالام المزمنه في جسمنا افوكادو افوكادو از فيري جود فور يو ايت از ماني از يو كان افوكادو كمان من الحاجات الكويسه جدا اللي بتقلل الالام المزمنه والالتهابات الموجوده في جسمنا بشكل عام other fruits or vegetables you recommend before we close this part the problem with fruits is that people think that all fruits are are healthy you know fruit is nature's candy so you want to you want to stay away from the fruits that have the highest uh, sugar content in them. So the ones with the lowest sugar content are the, the berries, like blueberries, blackberries. Um, stay away from the bananas, the apples. These have very high amounts of sugar in them. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I asked him about the fruit and the fruit. The fruit is very good. The fruit is very good. We try to avoid the fruit that has high sugar content because the other السكريات بتزود التهابات في جسمنا بتقلل قدره الجهاز المناعي على التعامل مع الالتهابات وبالتالي بتزود الالام المزمنه اي للمرضى اللي بيعانوا من الام مزمنه في جسمه. My favorite part ketogenic diet. هنتكلم مع حضراتكم دلوقتي على الكيتوجينيك دايت او الدايت اللي قالب العالم كله اللي بيسموها المولدات الكيتونيه او الاجسام الكيتونيه. اللي موجوده في جسمنا والحقيقه انا مستني الجزء ده جدا لانه زي ما انا قلت لحضراتكم الناس فقدت كتير جدا من الوزن عليه. You have told me a lot of people lost weight on it between 50 to 180 the most you have heard. I have, I have met multiple patients who are doing this and they are losing tons of weight. Tons yes. of weight tons. without hitting the gym or anything. No. Okay. So what's a ketogenic diet? Well, a ketogenic diet is basically a diet that is very low carbohydrate, but it's very high in the good healthy fats. I mean, there's good fats, there's bad fats. Right. So we want to optimize or increase the amount of good fats, and we want to minimize the number of bad fats and minimize carbohydrates. You know, there's no such thing as an essential carbohydrate. Your body can live completely fine if you never ate another carbohydrate in your life. Your body will create the glucose through gluconeogenesis, and so any carbohydrate that you need can be converted from fats into, okay. into glucose. So there is no need for us to have carbohydrates. Now the body can use two different sources of energy, either sugars or fats. Sugars, they're everywhere now. And that's why we have the diabetic ep epidemic, the obesity, the meta metabolic syndrome, the, the problem with cholesterol. Ketones are the alternative source of of energy. Your body can use them just like sugar. So if we optimize or increase the amount of ketones we use and minimize the amount of sugar, we have a potential cure for many diseases such as diabetes, such as potentially cancer or epilepsy and for weight loss. Yeah. So we can use the ketogenic diet to cure diabetes? Correct. Okay. We can use ketogenic diet, of course, for obesity. What other indications we can use the ketogenic diet for? 
uh, the classic indications for ketogenic diets are for epilepsy, for um, also actually a new one is Alzheimer's disease. Okay. Uh, that's so it um, helps Alzheimer and Parkinson too. Correct. Okay. Correct. Uh, ketogenic diet. Uh, أكثر أو أحدث دايت مستخدم في العالم كله وعامل انقلاب في حاجات يعني انقلاب في العالم كله إنه إزاي نستخدم الدهون آه الدهون الصحية لأنه الدهون فيها أنواع صحية أو مشبعة وأنواع غير مشبعة إزاي نستخدم الدهون بشكل عام آه فإن إحنا نفقد وزننا للوهلة الأولى لما ابتديت تكلم مع دكتور جيانج آه عن فكرة الكيتوجينيك دايت يعني ما اقتنعتش بيها إزاي هناكل دهون وستيل آه نفقد وزن قال ان احنا رقم واحد في الكيتوجينيك دايت ده بنعتمد على الدهون كسورش في كل حاجة وبنقلل وبن تماما او بنمنع تقريبا الكربوهيدرات او السكريات يعني بنعتمد على الدهون ونقلل تماما آه السكريات سألته كمان بيشتغل ازاي قال لي ازاي ما نقدرش ناكل سكريات قال لي لان الدهون اللي احنا بناكلها دي ممكن وطبعا بتكلم على فكرة الدهون الصحية وهنقول لحضراتكم على آه مصادرها آه، ازاي الدهون دي في جسمنا قال لي الدهون في جسمنا تقدر تخلق سكريات وبالتالي احنا مش محتاجين ناخد اي سكريات من بره هنعتمد فقط على الدهون قلت له النوع ده من الدايت بيقدر يساعد ايه من الامراض قال لي بيقدر يساعد مرضى الصرع وهو اساسا اكتشف آه في مرضى الصرع لما صاموا لفترات طويله جدا نبات الصرع قلت جدا قال لي بيحسن كمان الالزهايمر ديزيز آه بيحسن كمان الباركنسون او الشلل الرعاش وبيعالج وهو يعني بيقول انه في حالات كتيره ريبورتد في العالم بيعالج مرض السكر النوع الثاني تحديدا وفي ناس كتيره بتستخدمه ك يعني كنوع كنوع من الدايت عشان تفقد وزن زي ما قال دكتور جانج ناس فقدت كميه كبيره جدا من وزنها في وقت قصير من غير حتى فكره الاكسرسايز. So how the ketogenic diet is different than the standard diet? If we can show the slide number 26. Well, a ketogenic diet is very different than what you're going to find if you went on the U.S. government's uh, recommend recommended diet plan. They use something called the MyPlate now. Okay. Um, the, the ketogenic diet, first of all, any diet that you go on, you have to have a goal for it. Right. Whether it's to lose weight, to, to cure your diabetes, or whatever. Because there's actually no diet that I think is sustainable for your entire life. Right. You have to define your goal, choose the diet that's going to get you there. So let's say, let's take a patient who is uh, diabetic. We want to cure their diabetes. So we know that diabetes is insulin resistance. So now that we're putting them on a ketogenic diet, we're going to put them on foods that are not going to cause insulin to be secreted. Right. Fats, lots of them. There's no carbs in there. Over time, their body's going to secrete less insulin. Their cells are going to become more sensitive to uh, insulin. And over time, potentially cure their diabetes. So. How is it different? Well, we don't have grains in, in a ketogenic diet. No gluten. We, we don't put gluten in there. We don't put, uh, uh, basically carbohydrates, that's the villain is in a, for a ketogenic diet. We need to stay away from the carbohydrates. Okay, so if we can look at the slide here, the ketogenic diet, the main part is fat. Correct. Then almost no carbohydrate and some protein. Correct. Uh, they put it here, 90% of fat, 8% of protein, 2% of carbs. Yes. That's the proportion for each part. Well, there's many types of ketogenic diets, actually. Okay. There's uh, this type, which is defined here. And the Atkins. Well, Atkins is a high protein, low carbohydrate diet. The problem with Atkins is that if you're not an athlete and you're eating all this protein, all that protein is not going to be able to be uh, digested. You're going to damage your kidney. Well, no, it's gonna, your liver is going to turn all that excess protein back into sugar. Okay. So that's why some people hit a wall with the Atkins diet. Okay. They eat, they're eating all this protein, they're gaining weight again. Initially, they would lose a lot of weight, but then they eventually they start gaining more weight. The uh, ketogenic diet that I'm talking about, I know that it's almost the time that I'm going to finish, but I'm going to ask you that I'm going to give you a full episode because it's about... ال يعني السائد في العالم كله عامل انقلاب في العالم كله دلوقتي ولكن عايز اوري حضراتكم مفهوم بسيط عن الدايت لو نقدر آه الدايت العادي او الـ الـ المتبع بشكل عام اللي الناس بتتفق عليه 
اللي هو الستاندرد دايت بيقول ان انت لازم تاخد كميه معينه من الكربوهيدرات لو اللي هو شايفينه على الشمال ده وكميه معينه من البروتين وكميه معينه من كميه قليله جدا من الدهون الكيتوجينيك دايت غير خالص المفهوم ده اللي هو على اليمين لحضراتكم 90% من اكلك لازم يكون دهون صحيه طبعا مش دهون مشبعه وغير مشبعه والكلام ده دهون صحيه 8% منه بس بروتين 2% منه بس كربوهيدرات او سكريات يعني بيعتمد بشكل اساسي جدا على مصادر الدهون في الاكل آه وبالتالي بيولد حاجه اسمها الكيتون باديز او الاجسام الكيتونيه في جسمك على فكره الاجسام الكيتونيه بشكل عام بتخليك نشيط نشاط غير طبيعي طول اليوم آه يعني فعلا الناس 16 و18 ساعه شغل على آه الكيتوجينيك دايت بتخليك تفقد كميه كبيره من وزنك بس الحاجه الوحيده انه مفيش كربوهيدرات تقريبا فيري كويك ذا سايد افكتس اوف ذا كيتوجينيك دايت Well, the side effects of the ketogenic diet, um, the most common thing that patients complain of is constipation. The second thing is you may get um, bad breath because of the ketones that are being... Like, like rotten apple, kind of. Correct. Okay. Um, people often get tired of eating fat. That's why I, I'm telling you, you can't just do this forever. You have to hit your goal and uh, treat yourself once okay. you've made yourself healthier. How long you can be on ketogenic diet? You could be on a ketogenic diet forever if you want it to be, okay. if if it's giving you the health benefits. So you can seeking. use it to sustain your your weight. Oh yes. Okay. The hey, so Ali, on the ketogenic diet, can I at the end the next day on the ketogenic diet? Ali, maybe you can stay on it for a long time, and maybe you can stay on it. They call it, 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 قال لي انه بيعمل امساك شديد جدا احيانا بيعمل ريحه في البق ما بتبقاش مرغوب فيها قوي آه انا بوعد حضراتكم ان احنا هنفرد له حلقه كامله لانه وقتنا بيجري وور راب اب ذا سبورت هير ود ا بروميس ذات يو ويل بي وذ اس نيكست مانث فور وان ابيسود فور كيتوجينيك دايت اونلي اوكي ثانك يو سو ماتش ات واز فيري انفورماتيف اند ات واز ساتش ا بليجر اند اونر هافينج يو توداي ثانك يو فيري ماتش فور هافينج مي Again, a university pain consultant phone number. You can contact them for any kind of chronic pain conditions. Now, let them hot or calm university pain consultant Alal Shesha, 951 784 7111. Haulu Tani, Udam Hadarko Ashesha, 951 784 7111. One, Daru Hadarko, Tataoslo Mahom, Lay Hala Min Halet, El Alam El Muzmena, Henaf Ganub, California. خدت وعد من دكتور جيانج هنعمل لحضراتكم حلقه كامله على الكيتوجينيك دايت اللي هو قالب العالم دلوقتي وهنقول لحضراتكم مصادر الاكل تاكلوا ايه الفطار والغدا والعشاء نقدر نعمل فيهم ايه في النوع ده من الدايت برغم انه يبان صعب جدا انه بيعتمد فقط على الدهون 90% من الاكل هيبقى دهون هنشوف ازاي الوزن هينزل فيه بشكر حضراتكم حسن الاستماع والتفاعل النهارده وان شاء الله نشوفكم على خير وحلقه جديده من وايت كوت السبت الجاي